हेलो एवरीवन टुडे आई विल टॉक अबाउट लिटरेरी टर्म सोनेट एंड एलिजी नाउ दिस इज योर यूनिट फिफ्थ यू हैव लिटरेरी हिस्ट्री एंड लिटरेरी टर्म्स इन दिस यूनिट एंड दिस इज योर लास्ट यूनिट और भी लिटरेरी टर्म्स हैं जैसे कि लिरिक सिमिली मेटाफर पर्सोनिफिकेशन वी विल ऑल्सो कवर ऑल दीज टॉपिक्स बट टूडे इज लेक्चर इज इज ओनली अबाउट सोनेट एंड एलिजी so sonnet is a lyric poem comprising 14 rhyming lines of equal length in iambic pentameters we have discussed sonnet earlier also in your course there are three sonnets we have discussed on his blindness by john milton which is a petrarchan sonnet we have also studied spencer's one day i wrote her name एंड विलियम वर्ड्स वर्ड्स द वर्ल्ड इज टू मच विद अस ये तीन सॉनेट्स हम ऑलरेडी पढ़ चुके हैं और इससे आप लोगों को आइडिया ऑलरेडी हो चुका होगा कि दैट वॉट इज़ अ सॉनेट इफ यू टॉक अबाउट इट्स डेफिनेशन यू कुड से दैट अ सॉनेट इज़ अ पोएम ऑफ फोर्टीन लाइन्स एंड इट इज रिटर्न इन आयम्बिक पेंटामीटर नो वॉट इज आयम्बिक पेंटामीटर नो आयम्बिक पेंटामीटर इज अ फाइव सेट्स ऑफ अनस्ट्रेस्ड सिलेबल्स फॉलोड बाय स्ट्रेस्ड syllables to talk about its origin it originated in italy okay and if it talk particularly actually it originated in sicily and uh, it originated in sicily at the court of roman emperor frederick ii now frederick ii jo tha emperor tha rome ka sicily ek place hai italy mein wahan pe iske court mein ye jo sonnet form hai uska origin hua tha now the term sonnet if we talk about that this term it is derived from the italian word sonetto which means a sound or a little poem actually it was invented it was not invented by petrarch as i have written it was established by petrarch in the 14th century as a major form of love poetry and it came to be adopted in spain France and England in the sixteenth century. So actually, it was invented by an Italian poet, Giacomo da Lentini. Okay, so he was the inventor of the sonnet form. But the sonnet was made famous by Petrarch. Petrarch has written uh, has written sonnets in order to express his love for Laura. afterwards in england it was introduced by sir thomas yatt and henry howard in the 16th century now if we talk about the english form of sonnet and if we talk about these two courtiers thomas yatt and earl of surrey they both were young courtiers at the court of henry 8 and thomas yatt visited italy in 1527 and there he was deeply influenced by petrarch's mastery over verse and his expression of courtly love so after he heard about this new uh, about this new form of poetry he abandoned the chaucerian convention of long poems and thomas yatt he himself adopted and he imparted a new dignity to these shorter poems now henry howard he was also uh, he was yatt's disciple he was also a courtier but unfortunately they both died young and their songs and sonnets they were published for the first time in tottles miscellany so this so in england it was introduced by thomas yatt and by earl of surrey afterwards it was made famous by spencer by shakespeare and by milton now if we talk about the subject matter of these early sonnets was the torments of love but in the 17th century john dun extended the sonnets scope to religion while milton extended it to politics and milton has also written the subject matter is also personal like in milton's on his blindness he reflects on the personal loss of his blindness
although largely neglected in the 18th century the sonnet was revived in the 19th by wordsworth keats and bodile now 18th century was the age of prose and reason and the temper of the age now the growth of science and religion and political controversy all actually fostered the rise of prose so in 18th century you'll notice the rise of prose rise of the letters and it the sonnet and the poetry form were merely neglected at this age now some poets have written connected series of sonnets known as sonnet sequence or sonnet cycles like sir philip sidney's astrophel and stella spencer's amorty and shakespeare's sonnets and also elizabeth barrett browning's sonnet from the portuguese now sidney's sonnet sequence astrophel and stella it was written for his beloved penelope who was actually married to someone else now the theme of these sonnets are bitter regret for the lost happiness the irresistible desire to possess his beloved etc now with the publication of astrophel and stella it actually um, Uh, it was quite famous at that time and it actually caught the attention of the people and uh, it was like everybody tried his hand at writing sonnets and due to this excess of writing sonnets it was merely written because it was a fashion to write sonnets and not because the poets have some really felt passion to express with spencer's emrity you could you he has written it with sincerity and it is mrt is actually a collection of about 88 sonnets and they express spencer's love for his beloved elizabeth boyle who also became his wife shortly afterwards now if we talk about chief characteristics of spencerian sonnets they express the pure love of a lover who is about to marry his lady and they are quite different from the petrarchan sonnets they these sonnets are unique for their purity and their serenity if we talk about shakespearean sonnets he has uh, shakespeare wrote the sonnets uh, uh, he has written the actually they are 154 in number and uh, he published them in 1609 and in these sonnets the poet directly expresses his feelings apart from the sincerity of tone they also have the literary qualities of the highest order so sydney spencer shakespeare they are the greatest sonnet writers of the elizabethan era apart from them samuel daniel and michael drayton have also written some remarkable sonnet sequences now here in this slide i want to discuss about two famous sort of a uh, two famous kind of sonnets italian sonnet or petrarchan sonnet and the english sonnet now the italian sonnet comprises an eight line octave of two quatrains rhymed a b b a a b b a followed by a six line sestet usually rhymed c d e c d e italian ya petrarchan sonnet ke bare mein hum already pad chuke hain do parts mein divided hota hai octave aur sestet first part jo hota hai octave wo bhi do parts mein divided hota hai char char lines ki char lines ko hum quatrains bolte hain quatrain octave mein do quatrains hote hain aur sestet mein six lines hoti hain जो फर्स्ट एट लाइन्स होती हैं द फर्स्ट एट लाइन्स ऑफ पेट्रार्कन सॉनेट इट स्टेट अ प्रॉब्लम एंड इट एक्सप्रेस एन इमोशनल टेंशन एंड द लास्ट पार्ट द लास्ट सिक्स लाइन्स दे एक्चुअली आंसर द क्वेश्चन एंड रिलीव द टेंशन लाइक इन मिल्टन्स ऑन हिज ब्लाइंडनेस मिल्टन का जो सॉनेट है ऑन हिज ब्लाइंडनेस वो एक पेट्रार्कन सॉनेट है इसमें जो फर्स्ट पार्ट है जो ऑक्टेव है उसमें मिल्टन ने अपना जो लॉस है उसकी जो आई साइट चली जाती है उसका जो पर्सनल लॉस है उसके बारे में उसने बताया है उसके बारे में वो यू कुड से ही इज़ कम्प्लेनिंग टू गॉड अबाउट हिज लॉस्ट आई साइट ही इज़ कम्प्लेनिंग 
and he actually he is in dilemma and in the last part in the second part which is the sad state actually the poet provides us with a solution second part mein bataya gaya hai ki patience jo hai wo reply karta hai milton ko agar koi loss hua hai agar uske sath galat hua hai to bhi patience milton ko bolta hai ki ab jo कर सकते अब जो बेस्ट पार्ट है वो यही हो सकता है कि गॉड के डिसीजन को एक्सेप्ट करें इसमें लाइन है दोज हु स्टैंड एंड वेट आर द बेस्ट सर्वेंट्स ऑफ गॉड ओके सो फर्स्ट पार्ट में मिल्टन के इस सोनेट में फर्स्ट पार्ट में हमें एक प्रॉब्लम बताई गई है और सेकंड पार्ट में इसका सोल्यूशन बताया गया है आई थिंक इट्स क्लियर द पेट्राकन सोनेट नाउ द इंग्लिश सोनेट is also known as the shakespearean sonnet and it comprises three quatrain and a final couplet now important variant of this is the spenserian sonnet which links the three quatrains by rhyme in the sequence a b a b b c b c c d c d e e now english sonnet is divided into four parts jo english sonnet hai wo char parts mein divided hota hai three quatrain aur ek couplet जो फर्स्ट क्वार्ट्रेन है नाउ द फर्स्ट क्वार्ट्रेन शुड स्टैब्लिश द सब्जेक्ट ऑफ द सोनेट द सेकेंड सॉन इन द सेकेंड क्वार्ट्रेन द थीम इज डेवलप्ड इन द थर्ड क्वार्ट्रेन इट एक्चुअली शुड राउंड ऑफ द सोनेट्स थीम एंड द कपलेट जो लास्ट की टू लाइन्स होती हैं दे एक्ट एज अ कंक्लूजन टू द सोनेट नाउ एल जी एल जी इज एन एलेबोरेटली फॉर्मल लिरिक पोएम lamenting the death of a friend or a public figure or reflecting seriously on a solemn subject elegy poem ek aise lyric poem hoti hai jo kisi ki death pe likhi jati hai it is a lyric poem it is a lament for the death it is a lament for the uh, for the dead or you could say it laments the death of a public person or a friend or a loved one and it is uh, it could be written in any meter now tennyson uh, lord tennyson ne in memoriam elegy likhi thi apne friend ki memory mein now it is a long series of elegiac verse on his friend arthur hallam arthur hallam unka friend tha jiski cerebral hemorrhage se death ho gayi thi quite early so tennyson's uh, in memoriam he has written this elegy in memory of his friend and this elegy actually ends with the wedding song of tennyson's sister now walt whitman's elegy when lilacs last in the dooryard bloomed it is written in memory of the us president abraham lincoln rather than a friend if you talk about grey's elegy this is the most widely it is widely quoted elegy and thomas grey has written this elegy in order to meditate on the inevitability of death he has written in order to prove the vanity of ambition and he has written this elegy for the unhonored death which suggests member of a rural community grey ki elegy jo hai thomas grey ki wo kisi bhi famous personality ke liye nahi likhi gayi hai na hi uske kisi friend ke bare mein na hi iske koi relative ke bare mein usne ye elegy jo common man hai jo ki bahut hi aam zindagi jeeta hai uske bare mein usne wo life ye elegy jo hai wo likhi hai aisa insaan jiski life mein kuch bhi अट्रैक्टिव नहीं होता है कुछ भी न्यू नहीं होता है वो एक सिंपल सी लाइफ जीता है ऐसे कॉमन रस्टिक मैन के बारे में ये एलिजी लिखी गई है ये एलिजी बेस्ड है इफ़ आई कोट द फेमस लाइंस द पार्ट्स ऑफ ग्लोरी लीड बट टू द ग्रे आई थिंक विद दीज लाइन विद दिस लाइन इट इज क्लियर द इन एविटेबिलिटी ऑफ डेथ दैट डेथ इज एवरीवेयर यू कॉन्ट एस्केप फ्रॉम डेथ now two important english elegies that follow milton in using pastoral conventions are shelley's adonias which was written on the death of keats and matthew arnold's thyrsus now if we talk about pastoral elegy 
actually it borrows the classical convention of representing its subject as an idealized shepherd in an idealized pastoral background now pastoral elegy usually uh, it begins with an invocation of muse and it is followed by poet's grief and finally the poet's acceptance of inevitability of death now milton ne lycidas jo likhi hai wo apne college friend edward king ki memory mein likhi hai and it mourns the loss of a virtuous and promising young man who was about to embark upon a career as a clergy man lycidas jo hai wo actually ek shepherd tha in virgil's eclogues now the next elegy adonias it was written by shelley in memory of john keats we all know that john keats died quite early in his life he died in rome at the age of 26 so the mood of the poet begins uh, begin actually it begins in uh, dejection but this poem ends in optimism that keats's legacy will live on forever now the tradition of the pastoral elegy it was derived from greek poems by theocritus and other sicilian poets in the 3rd and 2nd centuries and it evolved a very elaborate sen- series of conventions by which the dead friend is represented as a shepherd mourned by the natural world to jo pastoral elegies hain unme ek set pattern hota hai or you could say that it is divided into three parts jo first part hai usme jo poet hai wo lament karta hai अपने फ्रेंड की अपने रिलेटिव की या कोई भी फिगर है उसके जाने के दुख में ही इज़ ही लेमेंट्स द लॉस सेकेंड पार्ट में जो पोइट है जो शेफर्ड है वो अपने डिपार्टेड सोल अपने डिपार्टेड फ्रेंड के जो वर्च्यूज थी उनको रिफ्लेक्ट करता है और थर्ड पार्ट में यू कुड से जो डेथ है डेथ का जो नेचर है जो दैट वी कॉन्ट एस्केप डेथ इसके बारे में बताया जाता है ओके सो दिस वॉज द दिस वॉज द टर्म एलिजी आई थिंक इट्स क्लियर थैंक यू